YOLO composing gloves here. And today we're gonna be talking about how to generate wavetables. I really want something crazy to happen right here. But anyways, this is where we're gonna stop. <laughs> Previously, we looked at what wavetables were and how they worked, but we want to generate them. What is the thought process? How do you make a useful, good sounding wavetable? It certainly was quite baffling to me the first time I picked up a wavetable synth because it's just like, how do I know what wavetables are going to sound cool? Here's a quick example. I favor wavetables for basses, so a lot of my examples are basses. I just like that. It's interesting to me. Sorry if you wanted like a, a nice flute sound or something. But this is the wavetable. It does have a distortion that helps it out. But I quite like the sound. It's a nice sound. Now, I, I kept it very minimum because we want to focus on the wavetable. We could, of course, get this to sound quite greasy, but we're not going to. So I'm going to present to you one method of, there are many others, but this one method I've noticed is a very, very popular one and it tends to produce great results. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna come in here, open up a new wavetable, and we're going to go into our editor, and you wanna go to new so that it's a blank one. Now the basic idea of wavetables, right, is we wanna morph between two things, or multiple things. Now wavetables that have too much going on are not useful, because there's they're just so messy. But wavetables that clearly go from one sound characteristic to another sound characteristic are really cool. So what we're going to do is we're going to select single cycle waveforms that have different qualities that we're going to morph between them. Now, depending on the type of sound that you want, that'll change the, the single cycle waveforms that you pick. But that's in general the process. Then afterwards, we're going to follow that up with something I call repeated processing, which is where you just do the same process over and over. That can produce some cool results. And the other one is faded processing. It's another term I just came up with, which is when you bring in results over time. And this is in particular what makes some growls, some growly wavetables sound the way they do. They've, they've really nailed this going from point A to point B and bringing in processing over time. So we're gonna stick to everything inside of phase plant, but you can actually do some really interesting things with samples in general and importing those in as a wavetable method. Maybe I'll cover other ideas on how to do this later, but I'm just gonna keep it simple. So I'm gonna grab this here sample. Go. It's vocal shouts, it just says go. I'm go. gonna grab that and bring that in here. And we, we see a new menus popped up, uh, which is we could see our waveform here. And we could see the wavetable that'll be generated. We could scroll through it. Pretty interesting. We have these phase alignment. It also does a pitch detection for us. We're not gonna worry about this too much, but because what we're interested in is we're interested in just grabbing single cycles. So we can come in here, we can actually change the phase alignment uh, to a bunch of different things that can be useful depending on what you wanna do. But I'm gonna go ahead and just click none and click okay. And right now, if we scroll through this here, now, most of it's garbage. Like, we don't need most of it. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to open another wavetable. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here and find single cycles that I think are interesting. Like, look at this one. Pretty dang interesting. So I'm going to grab this. You could just grab your own sample and do this. And what you do is you just select it in here. And I'm just going to go to Edit, Copy. I'm going to come to our second wavetable. I'm going to sort of move this off screen. So I'm going to go to our second wavetable. And I'm also going to clear it, so new. And I'm going to paste it, Control V. Or do I have to do paste? I might have to formally do paste. Paste, regular paste. And just right there is fine. We'll keep it separate. So there it is. Now we're going to come back to our other one. Let's find another cool one. Oh, see, so this is a pretty mellow sound. Like it's very sine wavy. So let's go ahead, let's grab this one. This could be a maybe a, a starting point or an end point. And we're going to copy this. We're going to go to a different frame. Maybe this will be our last one because it's so different. And we will go to paste. So, okay, we're good there. So we've got two waveforms. I'm going to grab a third one as sort of like a, a middle a middle thing. I want one that's maybe at the beginning of the word g, because, yeah, lots of interesting things happen in there. Um, we can hold down, I believe it's shift. 
and go through slowly. That one's pretty cool. Yeah, I'm gonna grab this one. Hope I didn't grab the same frame twice. That'd be like crazy. How, what are the chances? So we're gonna copy this. We're gonna put it right there in the middle. And so the idea is I'm just grabbing interesting single cycles. So here's our first cycle, it's this. Here's our second cycle. Here's our third cycle. We're gonna hit done. Now on these, I'm really quick gonna apply a remove DC just so that everything's centered. And I'll probably also apply a reset phases. And what that's gonna do is it makes it so that the phases cross at zero. And the reason I want to do this, and it's doing it for each one, you can see because of the keyframe spans the whole waveform. The reason I want this is if I stop here, my waveform will cross here. And that just, it's, there's a bunch of things with smoothness that this can help out with. It's not always super important, like, but some people are really adamant about this step. Just depends. I've had great results both ways. So long as your waveform is smoothly continuous, which if you notice, phase plant, like watch. It's the same here and the same here. So if we go through this path, you know, following this path, we wind up at the same value. So it is a smooth transition. So zero crossing isn't so much of an issue in phase plant as it can be in other wavetables since, but something to be aware of. I like to have this because this can sometimes come into play when we use distortions. You might wind up with weird clicking or other things. Just depends, again. So that's maybe a little bit too much information, but here we go. We've got them. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use my spectral morph. I wanna take advantage of this frame in particular. So I'm gonna put a morph there so that we get, uh, now I believe it's on 113. Now if we scroll through, we morph between the one and then we come down to that nice one right there. That's pretty beautiful. Let's, we're all done with this. Uh, so we can just get rid of this and put this on top. And let's hear it. So we already have some nice sort of form and see things in there. Uh, now things I didn't point out to look for in single cycles, but if you have like the voice, the voice valley kind of sounds has like frequency spikes and in waveforms, they'll kind of look like little bunches of things, and then maybe a wider area, and then another little bunch of things. And there'll be patterns of that. So if you grab waveforms that are like one scrunched up and one far away, you can get a very vowel-like sound to come out. So that's a way to create a really formancy wavetable. And I only picked two waveforms, but again, we're going for that contrast. So at the beginning, we start with this really sort of uh, bright, brightish tone. It's not the brightest tone on the planet. And as we go though, we very clearly get more mellow and filtered. Which this is great. This is exactly what we want. So we say, okay, this is nice. I accept this. You could try out the different morph modules. I find that if you use spectral morph, you get a more of a formancy quality to it. If you do linear, not so much, it, but it can vary again, depending on the particular things you're working with. So, okay, that's really nice, it's really great. So now we have this. So the next thing we were gonna do is either faded processing or repeated processing. Now repeated processing is like, let's say we take an effect and we apply one of these effects multiple times. I'm not going to do repeated processing because usually that's pretty experimental. So you might wind up with something really cool or really not cool. And a lot of times what you can do is you can do repeated processing over and over and over get a, a waveform that's super duper complex and then only use a small section of it as a new wavetable or a wavetable that's really complex and then use it for a new one, that can be really, really cool too. Like I saw a video by AU5 where he does that and the result was freaking fantastic. So there's a bunch of different ways. We're gonna use faded processing though because phase plant's so great at that. So I'm gonna come in here and I'm going to bring in the sync function because the sync's one of my favorite things in here, right? So we're gonna use sync. And we have here uh, a transition. Now, each one of these keyframes also records the values we give it here. So right now, if we play this, like let's, uh, let's get an envelope on this. We'll scoot this off to the side just so we have something running through it for us. And you can already see our waveform's been changed quite dramatically. It actually updates in real time. We're gonna make this a little longer. So that's sync. I want to move this, uh, we'll keep this here, but we'll bring the mix down to zero or really low, maybe like 13. Here, we're gonna bring the mix up. You see it was already interpolating. So if you change one and there's something in the middle, it's going to interpolate automatically. Like, so you, you need to be aware of that. 
And I'm going to change the multiplier. Let's see if we can get something. Oh, this is going to go up. <laughs> Let's go down. We'll bring our overlap up. I kind of like that. And then on our last one, the mix all the way up. And I'm pretty happy with that. So we have here an interesting thing. Now we notice it gets kind of softer as we go on. Now let's go ahead and let's apply a fix. We're gonna normalize it. So now things are gonna stay pretty much the same volume throughout, which is pretty nice. And now we're in a point where as a wavetable, we may wanna stop here. Like we could continue doing processing and get some pretty cool things. Uh, but we may want to stop here because we have an interesting smooth transition. This is where we might want to move into post. And let's just grab my classic distortion since for the past several times, this has been, I've been really happy with the results this does. We can bring this way up. Oh, the sign is really interesting. Okay. We could also make this a bit quicker. Play even lower. <laughs> And away we go. I want to demonstrate while this is on here. Let's go ahead and do one more thing. Uh, let's mess with the... Let's do the sine FM. That could be pretty crazy. Now this one's pretty a pretty brutal effect. So we want to stay careful. So I'm going to come over here. Since I'm going to start with it not being affected at first, I'm going to bring the first keyframe down to... Z the mix down to zero. That way... It's a smooth transition in. You see that? So let's move that over. Let's bring the amount down. Let's mess with the frequency. What can we get out of this? Bring the overlap. Oh, let's bring that down. Get a bit of a sharper sound. Let's bring it up. Let's type in, um, let's do four. Three. I like three. Let's bring this up. I like that. So I'm going to go with 7%. So it's pretty subtle. The effect isn't, though. It's quite noticeable. And we see here, we're ending on a very bright texture. And I want to end on sort of a more mellowy kind of thing. Now, you notice, though, if we do this, look at that. We get that bunchy in and out thing, which is the formancy kind of quality. So we could actually apply two keyframes to get a really formancy wavetable. I'm going to bring this down to a negative and get a bunchy quality right here instead. See, we get that like nasally, it's nice, right? Let's try moving this over more. Let's try, oh man, I'm all tempted to do all kinds of things now. Let's, uh, let's bring this down. Okay, so I like that, let's go with that. Ah, oh, I didn't show you it. But anyways, you saw me moving it around. What you can do is you can move the keyframe around, which is what I was doing without even thinking about it, and changing things. And you can actually add a middle keyframe and scroll it around, and you can just get like all kinds of results. If you look at the wavetable too, it can be quite dramatic, the effect that that can have. Let's go to fixes. Let's normalize it. You don't always want to normalize it because sometimes the volume change is part of what makes the wavetable what it is. But in, a lot of times... I go to the normalization. Um, so I'm pretty happy with that. So maybe instead of starting right there at the beginning, I like that quite a bit. Let's uh, play, let's bring the semitone down an octave. And let's begin to get a bit crazier with this. Let's add a comb filter, another distortion. I'm thinking let's bring this up and bring the attack long. Okay, I want to automate the envelope of the comb. I want to automate the comb filter's frequency. Yes, please. All right, uh, let's grab a three band EQ. I like to see what it would sound like with less low end. Let's bring the highs up a smidge. Let's bring the attack up a bit.
Okay, one thing that will help it out, at least for the creative process for me, is let's add some reverb a little bit. Bring the decay way down. Bring the damp. Let's bring the unison up. Oh my goodness, let's go up one more. I really like that end resonance. I'm not liking this reverb. I might grab a post reverb. Let's go ahead and add another LFO and let's just have the LFO sort of move the gain on this around a bit. And let's also have it move this around. Let's do another comb filter. Get that really sort of whooshy sound. This one will go up that. We'll bring the mix down though on this one. And let's have before the comb filter, let's have it go through another filter. We go, I'm gonna go with another three band EQ. We're gonna bring you over on top of this, please. And we're gonna bring the mids down. And then afterwards we'll give a mids a boost back. Let's take rid of that. It's kind of crazy how important that is. Let's try it with an ensemble instead, and then we'll put the reverb after that. Wow, it's uh, really cool. Let's bring the detune down. And bring the voices down to like two. And let's make it random. Okay, I'm digging the sound a lot more now. There's definitely things I could still touch, but we've got a cool sort of idea going. I'm gonna bring the polyphony down to one voice in legato. I wanna write in a small track and just throw a loop on top of it, see what we can get going here. I really want something crazy to happen right here. But anyways, this is where we're gonna stop. If you have any questions, let me know, subscribe, and have a blessed day.